Good evening to all. Welcome to CMF Pariyaram meeting of today. We have kept the theme today as how will we uh, share our testimony or proclaim our faith to our uh, family members or close relatives. Now, we might be very well walking in step with the spirit uh, in line with the uh, how the uh, spirit guides us but it is uh, imperative that sooner or later our family and our near and dear ones know that we are we or we let them know that we rely on God and we rely on God only now I personally found out that uh, sharing uh, about our conviction in the sharing about our conviction in the of our uh, personal being saved uh, this can be a bit more difficult sharing with family can be a bit more difficult and uh, as compared to sharing with a total stranger but nonetheless sooner or later we have to do this so that uh, our relatives also will under our near dear ones know what we stand for so this is this is the way I would present or I have presented in my case and I hope you will be able to take some pointers from this and do what is necessary when the time comes so maybe start with by saying okay I need to say something now and it's long overdue and yes start with an analogy start with an analogy see uh, Jesus gave a lot of uh, parables in his time these parables these are more accessible are more accessible to common folk or okay uh, before going into deep theology and all, at the end of the day so what we say or what we talk about should be uh, easily relatable to the individual so maybe we can use this analogy you are a world class CTBS or cardiothoracic surgeon in Kerala a death row convict, uh, so a prisoner. Uh, prisoner has been referred to you from the Kannur Central Jail after suffering an aortic dissection. By itself, aortic dissection can be fatal and the recovery be troublesome. So much so that even D. Baiki, okay, even D. Baiki had rejected the surgery at first, but later they operated on him and he became the one of the oldest. Uh, people who survived the Baiki procedure for aortic dissection and so the surgery went well patient was recovering from anesthesia and you get a call from the president of India president congratulates you and requests you to pass on the following message to the convict please give mercy petition to me as a president and I will surely pardon him but for whatsoever reason the surgeon did not utter a word uh, to this convict and this death row convict this person may or may not have thought about mercy petitioning in the past and anyway, this time he goes calmly back to jail embraces that sentence which apparently he may or may not have deserved now so the uh, this is one parable or uh, an analogy just comparing see death row convict it can be either each one of us it can be each one of us also and one of the other bro dear brothers and sisters also so you can take both stances you can take both stances here so if you are the uh, surgeon the question comes will you or are you justified in not proclaiming your faith to your near and dear ones there are people who are enslaved by sin or are under the power of sin should you not give them God's uh, blank check <laughs> literally God's blank check of salvation of salvation of Redemption, uh, redemption, or would you hide it? B uh, vice versa, also. Uh, vice versa, also. Uh, we can think. Anyway, so the the questions, big questions here are: Was the surgeon justified in hiding this from the convict? Then other things: What could have been the reasons for this surgeon hiding this apparent blank check for a new life for this person? And would things have gone differently if this surgeon was a follower of Christ? So, uh, there are higher level of questions. Was this right or wrong? One thing, he may or may not have had reasons. You might feel, or the surgeon, or ourselves might feel, okay, this other guy does not deserve to be saved, or things like that. Are we justified in thinking like that? Even beyond that, if you are a follower of Christ, can you, if you are a true follower of Christ, okay, as 
Paul says, okay, follow me as I follow the Lord. So, if you are a true follower of Christ, can you even think about refraining from preaching this good news and this salvation? This is things, something you have to ponder upon. So, in short, the surgeon was not justified and extrapolating each one of us and I myself am not justified in remaining silent to our relatives about my assurance of salvation. It would be convenient for everyone to remain silent, but we all would have to present an account, present an account to our Lord. Romans 8, 12. So then, each of us will give an account of himself uh, to God. Each one of us give an account to God. Now, see, again, re-emphasizing, yes, some of this would be very repetitions of whatever I said in the previous messages but nonetheless nonetheless it is important that I go on uh, re-emphasizing this so that uh, you all will be uh, edified and strengthened in faith so the message of the gospel so good news is for everyone but to know the mysteries in of Christ is for those who truly love the Lord now we did not choose Christ Christ chose us. This is the fundamental fact. Yes? We did not choose Christ. Christ chose us. That's why we believe. That's why we have faith. Faith is a gift of God. And this salvation is a free gift of God. But unless we open both our arms and receive it, we will be left doubting. And yes, discipleship is costly. So, if there is a reluctance on your, some reluctance or difficulties in sharing, if you are near and dear ones, there are two questions. Have we truly received the gift of salvation, this happiness, this assurance that yes, it is not by works but by faith we are saved. Do we have to be truly received it? Second thing is, are we true disciples of Christ who will be able to share this good news with everyone? So we will have to introspect. So we need to be very perfectly clear of what we stand for and only then we will be able to give it to them. So, okay, uh, you can only give to others what you have fully received. Uh, have already received, so, and I believe uh, our fellowships are uh, somewhat uh, able to provide you or uh, let you know on this uh, good news. Now, uh, also, we should be mainly talking about mercy, grace, and uh, this uh, characteristic of also mercy. What is mercy? It is not receiving the punishment we rightly deserve. So, yeah, we have sinned or we are sinners, we have flaws, limitations. So, the punishment is uh, death, and through, death, uh, through that, uh, hell, in a sense, hell. That is a punishment we all and sin sin means missing the mark. Sin means missing the mark. And see, good people don't go to heaven. Perfect people do. Perfect people do. And we are all not perfect. None of us are perfect. We are made perfect only by the sacrifice of our Lord on the cross. So regarding Christ's sacrifice, he is the atoning sacrifice, not only for our sins, for the sins of the whole world. So uh, this is that. So, mercy is not receiving the punishment. That is hell that we rightly deserve. But what is something beyond that? We preach something more than that. It is we preach grace. Grace is getting good things from the God which we do not deserve. Good things from the God which we do not deserve. So, one short form of grace would be God's riches at Christ's expense. God's riches at Christ's expense. So, then you... To start giving personal examples of how we have received grace. Yeah, we all have received mercy, that is our salvation, but beyond that, beyond that is the grace. I have received personally, I have received grace upon grace to the point that most, if not all, my colleagues cannot fathom the abundance of revelations or the uh, understanding. I may not actually use the word uh, revelation, uh, understanding, understanding. Yes. Okay, so 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 7. Or, because of this surpassingly great revelations, therefore, in order to in order to keep me from becoming consided, I was given a thorn in the flesh, a messenger of Satan, to torment me. So, when we proclaim all this uh, to our religion, uh, see, see uh, son or uh, mole, uh, you called me a couple of days back saying you are so frustrated with the department. 
Are you sure you have, uh, you know what you're doing and, and things like that. So they're saying, yes, of course, uh, we have received uh, the assurance of salvation in the Lord. But yes, also at the same time, okay, we, uh, if we are true, uh, called to a service, we, there will be persecution. There will be persecution. And even the Paul, okay, uh, one of the um, apostles, uh, the Paul, uh, Paul also, uh, in spite of this abundance of revelation, he even goes on to say uh, in uh, subsequent uh, portions of uh, scripture. Okay, uh, you know a person who did uh, been raised to third heaven, third heaven, whether in body or out of body, I do not know. But this Paul, this Paul who literally worked miracles and uh, went through it. Uh, in short, Paul who had literally seen tall. I can in, 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 yeah, somewhat use I can literally say, still. He was given a thorn in the flesh, thorn in the flesh, a messenger of Satan to, to torment me. And he goes on to say, three times I uh, appeal to the Lord to take it away, Lord. But um, God said, my grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. So, even, thorn, uh, even Paul had difficult people in life, in his life. And yes, even we come face to face with difficult people. Uh... When we come face to face with the difficult people, yes, we do get frustrated, we do share with the relatives, but yes, that does not, that does, just because you have frustrations, at times you are this does not mean you don't have that salvation, it just means that uh, probably uh, uh, you are doing the work of the Lord more, so you have getting more persecution. But yeah, initially when I joined here, I used to ask myself, where is the persecution? So I was thinking, was I truly following the Lord to the full extent? Because things were going rather well. Now I realize the Lord was preparing me spiritually for persecution to come, both internal and external. Okay, all our problems, there is definitely some external problem, but we make uh, mountains out of mole hills. We make mountains out of mole hills. So, uh, uh, the things are also there. So, <laughs> uh, You'll be surprised uh, if you go home after uh, around 9-10 months and after the coming back you are surprisingly calm. You who used to get angry or uh, say make a scene out of a very small thing might become a lot more calm once you come home. So it's a peace of God. Yeah, it's a peace of God will help you. Anyway, so Lord was preparing me spiritually and another version of the scriptures is Santo he was, he learned obedience through the things he suffered. Isaiah chapter 42 verse 18 to 19. Yeah, uh, we talked about this scripture um, previously also. Hear you deaf, look you blind. Who is blind but my servant and deaf like the messenger I sent? Who is blind like the one committed to me, blind like the servant of the Lord? Now, okay, probably the, from the context of the scripture, it is uh, saying something like, yes, uh, people of Israel, people of Israel, they are uh, even though God has called up to his service, they are blind in some sense. The way are also, in our case also, okay, we might be proclaiming the gospel to everyone, uh, literally here and there, but we may not be, we may not be uh, giving that testimony or giving that true testimony to the families. That's one thing, blind like my servant, uh, deaf like the messenger I sent. This is a one, one stance. So, for the context of this message, we can keep this um, the meaning as in a negative sense. There is a, could be a positive sense also in that sometimes we will, even though there is a lot of injustice happening or difficulties happening, we will have to keep on going, doing the will of the Lord without giving heed to the persecution, humiliation, people will humiliate you. Another portion of the scripture says, okay, uh, you will be tested in the furnace of humiliation. It will be tested in the furnace of emulation. So at times we will have to be like that. Anyway, so Hebrews 10, 11 and every priest stands daily at the service offering repeatedly the same sacrifices which can never take away sins. When Christ had offered for all time a single sacrifice for sins, he sat down on the right hand of God waiting from that time until his enemy should be made a footstool for his feet. For by a single offering he has perfected for all time those who are being sanctified. Our dear brothers and sisters, okay, we do, we all come from different, uh, slightly different backgrounds, but at the end of the day, there are some core uh, principles 
that the scripture uh, tells us so in hebrews chapter 8 9 10 in these chapters it is very clearly very clearly said so key verse every priest stands daily at the service offering repeatedly the same sacrifice which can never take away sins but when christ had offered for all time a single sacrifice for sins so let's be very clear with that single sacrifice death on the cross all the sins um, present and future also single sacrifice uh, on the cross or all the sins are cleansed uh, all the sins are cleansed let there be no confusions in that so regarding the assurance of salvation Romans 8.1 there is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus this is very important this is very important because at times we can get discouraged. Oh, and a lot of things like that. Oh, I have done something bad. See, we have, there have a lot of discussions going on, some recent movies and all. At the end of the time, dear uh, brothers and sisters, let's be very clear. Okay, our God is not so petty. And uh, there is no depths of depravity that our Lord cannot heal. But the only thing, you have to go to Him. Uh, surrender to him now, it's, that's very difficult like especially uh, for some perfectionist people and they say we are our worst judges so let me be clear and this is one reason why people backslide also let's be very clear there is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus the only question is whether you are in Christ or not whether you have died uh, with your uh, body of the flesh and the reason that eternal <sighs> The glory of the Lord. Okay, so uh, there is no condemnation for those who are in uh, Christ. And uh, but there are others also. We do see the sisters and our uh, uh, dear ones also. They, uh, John chapter five verse thirty nine to forty. You diligently study the scriptures because you think in them you have eternal life. These are the very scriptures that testify about me. Yet you refuse to come to me to have life. Dear brothers and sisters, where do we go to have life? Uh, do we go to television? Do we go to internet? Do we go to relations to have joy and all? Or do we go to the mercy seat of the Lord? This is a very uh, thing. Yes, uh, in the past, or some of our dear brothers and sisters also. Yes, you read the scriptures diligently. They know the scripture. But do they know the God behind the scripture? The loving God, the merciful God, the... God who can forgive, uh, forgive, and uh, uh, he, when he forgives, he forgets also. So, okay, do we have that faith also? And again, can you truly come to Him? Do, truly come to Him? Okay. So, uh, also uh, John chapter four verse twenty-three. Yet a time is coming and has now come, and true worshippers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth, for they are the kind of worshippers the Father seeks. Dear brothers and sisters. So now Corona came, most of our worship services are um, may, may be virtual and all. But you see, in Christ, uh, around 2000 years back, 2000 years back itself, yes, uh, sorry, it's not, it's not just a prophecy, it is the truth that a time is coming where true worshippers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. So it's a higher form of worship. It's a higher form of worship. We are able to worship in the spirit and in the truth. Yes, we do. Uh, there are multiple instances of the Bible. Multiple instances of the Bible. Yes, there were uh, differences of opinion. Even when Peter was called to the house of Cornelius, okay, he was, still had a little bit of little bit of doubt. But is when while he was preaching, while he was preaching itself. Uh, the Holy Spirit came upon Cornelius and his family. Okay, so the word of Spirit, the word of the Lord, uh, the Spirit of the Lord came to Cornelius and his family. So, again, God knew that maybe Paul might have a, a bit of a question, but see, so, so let's be very clear, my dear brothers and sisters. God chose us, each one of us, irrespective of. Uh, uh, religion, socio-economic status, backgrounds, birth, name, gender, whatever. Okay, uh, we have a scripture. Galatians chapter 3 verse 20. There is neither Jew nor Gentile, neither slave nor free, nor there is male and female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. Let's, let this, uh, it's a very, very powerful verse. A very powerful verse and can be 
in our context also see uh, the scriptures might have been written around 2000 years back this is a very, very still still very contemporary when you re read the scripture you can very well say this words keep this in mind galatians chapter 3 verse 20 there is neither jew nor gentile and period and neither jew nor gentile they are clear as that one sentence uh, takes away uh, there's neither jew nor gentile neither slave nor free and we, we need to really question what is free we are all slaves to sin I mean, we were all uh, slaves to sin but uh, still we might still be uh, but still no uh, there, there's neither male nor female you are all one in christ this is very very encouraging words very encouraging words yes we spoke about worship and also the one media that christ as a one media first timothy chapter 2 verse 2 to 7 for there is one god and there is one mediator between god and men that man uh, christ jesus who gave himself as a ransom for all the testimony that is given at just the right time for this reason i have appointed a preacher an apostle a faithful and true teacher of gentiles i'm telling the truth and not lying about anything therefore i want the men else to pray lifting up holy hands without anger or dissension so yes christ the heading christ as the one mediator between god and you don't need anyone else okay you come to sin you have gone astray you don't know what to do come to him that cornerstone and uh, cornerstone uh, the valuable stone the precious stone so christ is the one mediator between god uh, the uh, triune god and man let's be very clear with that and this is another thing we should be very uh, clear um, dear brothers and sisters and finally so we have uh, we have given a crux of our uh, personal conviction and finally some we should be able to share something more personal with them but they should also understand that we are not boasting we are not boasting so in that this is again paul also said romans chapter 15 verse 18 i will not venture to speak of anything except what christ has accomplished through me in leading the gentiles to obey by what i have said and done now see this is very curious and dear brothers and sisters see paul was sent to the gentiles and peter uh, and all was sent to the uh, jews now if you think of it logically logically okay peter uh, educated on the feet of gamaliel very well versed in the scriptures and hebrew law as a pharisee and all but god chose to send paul paul with all that knowledge or say uh, all that knowledge he was sent to the gentiles uh, gentiles why peter peter was literally fisherman literally fisherman uh, uh, was asked to them. only to make it very clear that whatever he accomplished is through christ so there is nothing so uh, there is a difference between boasting and proclaiming what christ has done through so in my personal Uh, as my personal testimony over the past one and a half years i have spent as much time as much time um, studying the unadulterated word of god as compared to learning psychiatry learning psychiatry so coming here yes one aim was learning psychiatry but beyond that yes it was uh, growing closer to the lord unadulterated unadulterated word of the lord and um, dear brothers and sisters god is not a deputy one by his grace by his grace through a lot of trial and error can currently i am able to cover a four four hour online class in one hour and still have that extra two hours to study the word of the lord in short i am able to say do a lecture i can play it at 2x 3x even four times speed and able to have by god's grace a decent amount of comprehension uh, the only reason i came across this the only reason i came across this what our capabilities technological or relational is because i had to record these messages because of the lack of privacy in uh, conducting uh, live sessions i have to record my sessions while doing this i came to know that whatever is recorded can be played at two times three times even four times and by trial and error by god's grace now i am rather comfortable with revising whatever i have learned at four times the speed so 
again i will not venture to speak of anything except what christ has accomplished through me so i am just saying that god has multiplied the time and resources we all have that 24 hours a day we all and god has given that but whatever whatever time he gives to give to the lord he can multiply it okay you spend 12 hours for the lord he will whatever that remaining waking 6 hours or not he will multiply it and make it 24 Yes, so for if you are in Christ, you can have up to 48 or even uh, say 96 hours a day. Uh, quite curious, huh? Yes, so God has multiplied the time. Even Martin Luther used to say, okay, I have so much to do that I must spend minimum of three hours today in prayer. Anyway, the only thing we are asked in response, in response being that we remain faithful to the Great Commission, Matthew chapter 28 verse 19. The chapter 28 verse 19. Therefore, go therefore and make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the father and the son and the holy spirit so this is one thing but when we start uh, saying about all this one very uh, difficult to uh, answer question would be what about our other relatives or dead rel- okay, relatives who have slept in death what about them are they in heaven Uh, where have they gone there be a lot of uh, emotional baggage when it comes to that and before we proclaim our faith we should be very we should be very clear should be very clear and this this uh, scripture would help us answer this first thessalonians chapter 4 verse 13 brothers and sisters we do not want you to be uninformed about those who sleep in death so that you do not grieve like the rest of mankind who have no hope for we believe that Jesus died and rose again so we believe that God will bring with Jesus those who have fallen asleep with him now uh so if you are in Christ okay you do not die but you sleep you sleep okay he is asleep in death and we will be uh, uh, with Christ uh, with Christ so the question of whether someone is truly in Christ or not that is something um, personal between the person and himself some of our near and dear relatives while we knew them they may not be uh, very good followers of Christ they may be just namesake followers of Christ okay namesake Christians without any true faith or they may not be Christians at all but at the end of the day as I told you brothers and sisters our Lord is not so petty he sees the hearts of man and even the dead but also god can give a revelation as well but we should not this should not be an excuse for not sharing the gospel with them we should definitely take it up as a challenge to share the good news with them if they have heard the good news at least once in their lifetimes very decent chance that they can even at least at their dead beds uh, come to accept the lord but yes at the end of the day we should be sure that we should not grieve like the rest of mankind who have no hope we have the greater hope that a lord will be able to deliver and regarding uh, people who have al- already no more uh, there's not much question of uh, contemplating uh, regarding whether they were in christ or not so see that's again i want to very uh, clearly say our god is not so petty so as to hold a grudge as we do stupid things we keep on doing again stupid things but then it is a fact that even followers of christ sin inadvertently but if you have that assurance of salvation you will never be discouraged and will always be able to run back to the mercy seat brother brother says the confession is verbal but repentance is action so how you choose to live okay one day you are not saved another day you have the assurance of salvation your life from now on your life every day in life will uh, show whether you have that repentance or not so repentance is necessarily an action conversion is verbally verbal but lord seeks repentance and again there is no depth or depravity that the lord cannot redeem this is probably contradictory to what we grew up hearing okay you did this so you should offer a penance like that you did uh, you did not do like this so you should offer this much money to the church now that's not to say our god is merciful god god who can forgive and we should be very clear on this luke chapter 23 verse 39 one of the criminals who hung there heaped abuse on him are you not the christ he said save yourself and us but the other one rebuked him saying do you not even fear god since you are under the same judgment we are punished justly for we are receiving what our actions deserve but this man has 
done nothing wrong then he said jesus remember me when you come into your kingdom and jesus said to him truly i tell you today you will be with me in paradise a period okay full stop so the only thing probably really good thing this uh uh this other person who was crucified along with Christ did in his life would have been confessing that Christ is Lord and he just Jesus remember me and you come to your confession now see dear brothers and sisters this is not this is not come easy this does not come the faith faith is a gift of a god this does not come easy but this man the holy spirit has given that faith and when he called upon the lord in that last moment of his death so also Jesus said, truly i tell you today we will be with me in paradise so uh, regarding my personal take i was a man consumed by rage uh, for a long uh, or a majority part of my life a lot of reasons for that yes, the death of my father was one thing uh, there are some difficult circumstances especially uh, from those people who are supposed to protect us but yes the flames of rage and darkness still burn quietly inside but i have absolute faith that my lord has saved me and called me to his uh, service <coughs> now regarding we should always also be wary of people okay uh, say hypocritical or pharisaical type of people who uh, just from uh, just reading the relevant portion of the matthew 23 matthew 23 4 they tie up heavy and burdensome loads and lay them on men's shoulders but they themselves are not li- willing to lift a finger to move them you can have names say christians doing things like that be very sh- sure the scripture Jesus himself is not the uh, apostles Jesus himself are de- denouncing such people then and now yes uh, our scripture is very contemporary or uh, is still relevant in contemporary Matthew 23 13 you yourself do not enter nor will you let in those who wish to enter yes this also happens to uh, some people we know and finally Christ asks can uh, go read up the uh verse matthew 23 18 to 22 very core verse just the core question which is greater the gold or the temple that makes the gold sacred which is greater the gift or the altar that makes it sacred so probably while we are uh in the process of again we read the similar verse you will enjoy read the scriptures Uh, thinking in them we have done it. but we should understand that there's a god behind the bible the core the crux of the message so it is not just the individual man is beyond that beyond that is a lord so it is a lord or god or yahova jehova who uh, makes the soul not sacred so we should be very clear where do we where have we placed our trust in so please Uh, be wary of people who says okay if you swear by the temple it's no problem but swearing by the gold it is bad see temple is the, the person of the christ the person of the christ is much beyond uh, than what we can comprehend so finally what to use scribes and pharisees you hypocrites you pay tithes of men dill and cumin but you disregard the weightier matters of the law justice mercy and faithfulness you should have practiced the latter without neglecting the former you blind guides you strain out a knot but swallow a camel again just briefly saying justice mercy faithfulness all other things yes well and good well and good okay you can have all of that you can have the traditions all of that but at the end of the day justice mercy faithfulness it should be held as one of the pillars uh, of our faith and where we feel that these things are being neglected be very clear okay jesus himself has said uh, woe okay woe to is a curse as in uh, also a warning also jesus himself have warned about such people or institutions finally again this is one very very encouraging verse uh, for you as not to grieve like the rest of mankind who have no hope and yes dear brothers and sisters possessed of the sanhedrin the joycing because they have been wo- uh, counted worthy of suffering disgrace for the name so when you proclaim or uh, 
mixture with the relatives there might be a lot of different reactions to it they might initially accept there might be uh, some hue and cry there might be some bit more aggressive reactions also but at the end of the day yes have we reached to the point we to the point where we can count ourselves worthy of suffering disgrace for the name of the lord or it is an honor it is a greater honor that we are worthy to suffer for his name uh, have you reached that level of discipleship and finally dear brothers and sisters this is romans chapter 9 verse 10 yet before the twins were born or had done anything good or bad in order that god's purpose in election might stand not by works but him who calls she was told the older will serve the younger so see god's election is a different thing altogether different thing altogether it is not because of our works not because of our works similar verse Ephesians 2 said for it is by grace you have been saved through faith this is not from yourselves it is a gift of god not by works let's make it very clear to you dear brothers and sisters and we should also very frankly tell it to your uh, dear ones it is our salvation is a gift of god and it is not by works because if it is by works people will boast and again i will not venture to boast of anything except um, what christ has done through me so it's a gift of god for we are god's handy work created in christ jesus to do good works which god has prepared for us in advance for us to do in advance also in advance for us to do again jeremiah it says they will be called oaks of righteousness a planting of the lord you know the display of splendor yes now finally finally dear brothers and sisters uh when we share with the family uh, uh, especially if they are uh, names are christians they might say something like okay obey your parents but beyond that yes obeying your parents is important the sacks of i repeated and and also original command is obey your parents in the lord in the lord peter and our brother apostles said right we must obey god rather than human beings the god of our ancestors raised is from dead whom you killed by hanging him on a cross god exalted him right hand and, and prince and savior so that he might bring israel to repentance for give their sins we are witnesses of these things so is the holy spirit whom him given to those who obey him he message we must obey god rather than human beings okay, being submissive one thing yes that we are several times called to be submissive yes to our earthly masters yes yes but when it comes to clear cut was some uh, bare minimum okay then the scripture does not ask too much of us uh, in a figurative sense but when it comes to the core things that the scripture asks us we must go obey god rather than human beings and finally dear brothers and sisters whosoever will save his life shall lose it and whosoever shall lose his life for my sake shall find it matthew 16 chapter 25 wish you all uh, uh, another week of uh, a closer walk with the lord thank you uh, and amen praise be to our lord and savior jesus christ amen